Hey guys, it's Stas here. Today we've got a video a little bit different today. We're going to be talking uh, with Luke from Nui Distillery. Uh, it's got a little bit of an interview. It's a longer video, but hopefully you guys will find uh, the information contained in the interview uh, interesting and useful. We'll be talking about some of their products and uh, also an introduction to distilling. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video. All right, we're here with Luke uh, from Nui Distillery. Um, we're here, to, he's graciously agreed to host us and we're going to be talking a little bit about um, their products and their still, or actually a couple of different stills that you've yeah. got, and then hopefully we'll be able to you know, talk, talk through what you, uh, what you guys do here, because it looks pretty impressive. Yeah, thanks for coming along. So no here at New Eater Distillery, we're a family owned business, we've got 14 full time staff that keep this place running pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. We're very passionate about everything we do. And for, for us, this is not just a, a business, it's a hobby turned into a passion and something that we really love doing. Yeah, cool. So mm. you, you said it was a hobby. Did you, how did you, what was, what was the impetus that made you decide to get into spirits or making spirits yeah. on your own? So I've basically been making spirits myself as, for a decade as a hobby. And I really love doing it. It's great fun, you can have a, a nice drink at the end of it as well and, and basically after about eight years of doing it as a hobby, we had our first child and my wife and I, my wife's a, got a business degree myself, I've got a, a commerce degree, I'm a business advisor and I've been helping the, uh, the liquor industry for a long time and after we had the first child, my wife wanted some flexibility in what she does. And so we decided, you know what, let's set, uh, set up a business at home so we can have the flexibility to do whatever we want in our own hours. And after a month of her thinking about what we could do and a few horrible ideas, <laughs> we then decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's uh, start ramping up and uh, making some spirits and yeah. turn it from a hobby into actual business and give it a crack. So were you actually starting the commercialization of distilling at home? Yeah. Is that how you started? Yeah, so literally this all started, we're building a big shed at the back of our, our property yeah. and went, went through the council with it, we went through all the hoops and the red tape that went along with that yep. and that took a many, many months to get through and managed to get the council on board, get Lifting Gaming on board and set up a shop in our backyard and started making some really great products. and. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we first started off slow and we were selling a, a few bottles a month and then started to really ramp up the advertising. We yep. won a few really big awards yep. uh, very early on and that gave us a bit of credibility behind our spirits. And that was, that was you on a small, is it, was it a, a home still or was it a, large, was it a small leash it was, commercial still? It was a smallish commercial still, so it was a 200 litre uh, stainless steel still that That's we started that off with. one over there? Yeah, the one over there. We'll, we'll give you a look at that later. Yeah. Uh, before that at home, I first uh, started running on a, a little air still back when I first started oh, yeah. uh, playing around. And then after oh, six months, I uh, needed something bigger, and so I moved to a T500. Yep. And a little, uh, so a little column still, then we slide a second T500 with a pot, uh, pot on the top. Yeah, the Alembic. Yeah, the Alembic yep. pot on the, yep. on the top there, so I played around with that. And then when we went commercial, jumped up to a 200 litre still. Yeah, is that, a, is that from S Still Dragon? Yeah, that's it actually is? from yeah. Still Dragon. Yeah, yeah. I sort of recognise the shapes and stuff. Yeah, and it was a really good one to yeah. play around with when put first uh, ramping up. And after a year and a half of doing that, we then gained in popularity mm -hmm. and the product started really taking off and we needed something a bit bigger. So then we had this beautiful beast uh, uh, all made. Yeah, and you, you can't actually see the full size of it, but I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll overlay some yeah. videos or B-rolls or something. It's basically three metres long by a, just over three metres high, and it's a, it works multi-function, so it's got a yeah, almost a limbic top on the uh, top of it, so you can use it as a pot still yep. for when we're making our whiskey, mm -hmm. and then it's also got the column, so we can use that to clean our wash to make, it, make all of our, our vodka and gin as well. So we can run through a process and how we do that, if you like. Yeah, well, well do, do we want to transition to that now or do you want to talk a little bit about what we're, what yeah, we're drinking we'll at the minute? Yeah, we talked about We talked about gin, 
This is, well, you, you, you better talk about your own product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what we're drinking here is the, the new distillery signature gin. This one here actually just won a silver medal at the International World Spirits Competition mm. over in London. Okay, cool. So we got a very respectable 93 uh, uh, rating on that one, she gave mm -hmm. us a silver award. That is one of the very elite competitions run globally. Mm -hmm. uh, beside that one, we've won a whole bunch of local awards as well. And it's just really good, easy drinking gin. Yeah, it's, well, I'd really like to be interested to taste it straight because I can definitely taste all the, the, the tonic water, and, but I'm getting a really nice soft gin, yeah. juniper, and I, I'm guessing there are other things in there as well. Yeah, so Signature Gin's actually got 16 different botanicals in yeah, well. <laughs> So it's a, it's a nice, good drinking gin, but there's that complexity in there to really appreciate what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. It's very well balanced. And then so next to that, we've got, well, this one here is our dry gin. Yep. It also got silver over in the International World Spirits Competition. And the dry gin is more of a juniper forward gin, mm -hmm. whereas that signature gin is more of a juniper back and more of the flavour and spices coming forward in it. Yep. But they're both really amazing gins. They're right. And we've got a couple of other ones here. Yeah. That's the signature. So we've got... Our Spice Explorer Gin, we've got our Australiana Gin, mm -hmm. uh, our Coal Miner Strength Gin, which is 55.5% yeah. strength for those really good gin lovers. Yeah. And I tell you what, any really good gin lover that grabs it, tries it, they keep on coming back for more of it. It's a really good one. Cool. As well. oh, might have to. We've also got so, a mulled wine gin, which we're about to oh, really? uh, release in the next couple of weeks, and, and a whole bunch of other ones. We've got a few barrel aging gins at the back as well, mm -hmm. and we'll be releasing them in the next 12 months as well. Wow. I'm definitely going <laughs> to come back and have a try. That's for yeah. sure. So, when you're making a gin, going back to the process of distillation, mm. I mean, I, I work. Um, at a Newcastle brew shop. I've also been working with Beer Co. Uh, for a number of years and we get lots of people who are doing this stuff at home mm. and because of the current legal situation in, in Australia, there's a lot of, it's, it's very hush-hush and mm. there's a lot of people who are a bit unsure as to, you know, what questions to ask and it's a bit, it's always hard to sort of give information openly and make mm. sure that it's good information because I'd much rather somebody know how to do it properly and more importantly safely. Yeah. Um, as you know, it's my understanding is that it's pretty, once you understand the basics, it's pretty safe. Yeah. So long as you're doing the basics, make sure you're doing the basics all the time. That's right. So, yeah. um, so you're, you're making your own wash here, we've, what, we've got two different basic umbrellas of still designs, don't we? We've got the, the pot still mm -hmm. and the reflux still. Yeah. Uh, but before we talk about that, maybe what is distillation? Because a lot of people say, oh, distillers make the alcohol, but that's completely false. It's the yeast that make the alcohol. Correct, yeah. And I, I just did a video on Fermentation 101 that covers all that sort of stuff. And so once we've got the wash, uh, the, the alcoholic, usually about 8%, you guys, 8 to 12%? Yeah, in terms we can of wash. generally, ours, we tend to get around 12%. Mm -hmm. In summer, when we can get ideal conditions, we can get up, up to 16%. Yep. Uh, but yeah, generally around 12% is what it comes out at. But our wash, basically, we do two different types of washes we do a sugar wash mm -hmm. and a grain a build. Yep. So, our sugar wash we get from farms up in northern Queensland yep. where they send down to here their in 20, litre, uh, 20 kilo bags uh, the sugar and we then uh, on site put into our fermentation tanks. So we had a couple here, a ton yep. more across the road and we put our sugar in there with water, yeast and, 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 and nutrients. And nutrients, yeah. So you're not doing any fancy stuff with invert sugar or? No, so we literally get our, and this is a pure good quality sugar that we yeah. get in, which hasn't been treated. It, uh, it comes from a really good local farm that doesn't use any uh, pesticides or anything in it. So it's really good quality product. And we basically get it, we put it in our, in our tanks, mm -hmm. uh, we mix it all up to create our wash, and then we let the yeast do its work. Yeah, right. And the yeast does the job, and it basically it ferments the way to create our wash. And you're right, the yeast basically eat away the sugar, uh, and that creates the alcohol. Mm -hmm. So once we've got our wash, 
We then put it into a still, and this is a continuous column still, yep. is that right? Um, so if we were making a neutral, because we would, if we start with sugar, we're going to be making a neutral most yep. likely. Um, what's the process of, of distillation? What is distillation? Yeah. So after it comes out of our still, so we've got our wash, uh, out of, it comes out of the fermentation tank, so we've got our wash, we then transfer it over to the boiler, where essentially we boil it between 80 and 88 degrees. Okay. At that temperature range, alcohol boils off, but water doesn't. Mm -hmm. So distillation essentially is a separation of two substances from each other. And what we're doing is we're separating out the ac pure alcohol from that wa murky wash. Mm -hmm. And then one, boiling that temperature, the alcohol then uh, comes to a vapour and boils off and goes through the still. Now, with the reflux still, column still, essentially we're sending that vapour through multiple layers mm -hmm. uh, of the column still or in a reflux still and it's being pushed through, generally have little copper uh, beads uh, or rings uh, filled through the, the column yep. and we're pushing the, that alcohol vapour through that. And there's some magical science that happens when this uh, beautiful uh, vapour interacts with copper mm -hmm. and essentially it kills off and burns off all the impurities that come out of that wash. Because as we know, there's, that wash doesn't taste great. No. And <laughs> when you uh, run it through the column still, the first part that comes off is really methanol. It, yeah. it's, a, it, it's toxic, it'll really hurt you if you try drinking that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to do is to use the reflux and the column still to separate that out, clean up the alcohol <coughs> spirit. And with our one here, by the time it gets through all these layers that are in our column still, and then the last uh, column here then is a condenser, condenses mm -hmm. that vapour back down to That's a liquid. That's this guy here? Yeah. Yep. And then it bubbles up at Sorry, that I'm little the uh, part there at the end. Generally comes out there about 90% pure alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then once that comes out there, essentially we, in the bottom here we do a couple of different uh, distiller cuts. Mm -hmm. So generally the first 10% we, we get out, it doesn't even go into our tanks, it comes straight out in a bucket and we then dilute that down and, and destroy it, get rid of it. Right. The next about 30%, yeah, your heads we then put into a separate uh, tank, which we will redistill re and try yep. and get a little bit more out of. Mm -hmm. But then we keep the hearts of it, which is about ends up being about 50 to 60% of our overall wash. Uh, of the volume. Of the yeah, volume yeah, 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 yeah. is our hearts that we <coughs> end up keep and bottling. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the towels, which we then separate and we redistill, yep. but also use the towel for, for some other purposes, mm -hmm. uh, such as we use that in our whiskey as a bit of a blend as well. Okay. And then the last bit of it, we, uh, we end up destroying as well and getting yep. rid of it. And yeah, that heart bit, the heart piece is what we're actually looking for that creates a really nice, good quality spirit. Yeah, and that's, uh, so you, you talked about a couple of terms which people probably will already know about. You've got your, your four shots, which is where your methanol is. Yeah. And that's, you know, highly concentrated. If there is any methanol in there, it's gonna be in there in high amounts. And if you drink that, that's gonna be toxic. Yeah, destroy um, that, don't yep. drink it. Uh, or use it for cleaning. Yeah, you could use it for cleaning, <laughs> lighting fires, all that sort of stuff, obviously, to keep your house warm, not yeah. arson. Uh, <laughs> um, then you've got your heads, which uh, is not particularly pleasant to drink. It's likely to give you, what, horrendous hangovers and quite prickly on the tongue. You'll know the, the next day whether there's too much heads yeah. in what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the you've got the, the hearts, which is the bulk of and the most neutral and the, the most smooth alcohol. And then you get the tails, which you start to get a little bit sour, a little yeah. oily, not the best. Some people call like concrete and wet dog and all yeah. that sort of stuff. It's it's a bit bit funky. Um, yeah. And for some, uh, I, I've heard that for like whiskies, especially smoked whiskies and stuff, in the tails is where all that smoke flavour hides. Yeah. Um, so using it to blend with your whiskies if you want just a touch of that, but if you have too much, it's a bit. Yeah. Not so good. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's a, that's the reflux still, yeah. and you, you, you look, you're looking for low flavour, high purity. Yep. Generally, for a yeah. reflux still. Pretty much. And then the key after we've done that first washing and uh, the first uh, stint here, stripping run, mm -hmm. and and we keep <coughs> out of there the hearts. We then basically get that and we chuck that back in the still, and we actually use this like a pot still. Right. And after, and basically, we fill this little thing up the top, uh, here. This is our gin basket. Mm -hmm. We generally fill that with about 10 kilos of juniper berries, herbs, and spices. And we basically rerun the, the still again using the hearts, and we send it 
basically straight through our gin basket to pick up all the flavours in it and then it goes straight to the end to the condenser right, okay. to condense that down and it comes out as our gin. Right. Which we, is then strong as well, which we dilute down using heavily filtered water that comes through our re reverse osmosis water filtration system mm -hmm. and to get pure water that doesn't impact on the flavouring to really end up with an amazing product. Yeah. Awesome. And that's where the pot still comes in place where essentially we use it like a pot still. Yeah. So the difference with the pot still essentially is it doesn't strip out any of the impurities that, that are in it. So if you try, if you make a really good whiskey base and run it through a reflex uh, still or a column still, you're essentially stripping out all the flavouring that's in it to come back yeah. to a neutral. Yeah, we've, I've, I've had a number of uh, customers that come in either doing rum or they want to put uh, botanicals in their neutral spirit and run it through their reflux still. I'm like, it's a waste of time. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. will get some flavour, but you'll lose most of it. Yeah. So, yeah, reflux is high purity, low flavour. Yep. Pot still is for low, lower purity and high flavour. Exactly. Yeah. So having a pot still, it won't, it won't basically clean your spirit and make it more smooth, but it'll it use it for adding flavour. Mm -hmm. So most people would use a, a reflux and a pot still in combination, yep. which is what we used to, what I used to do back in the day. Mm -hmm. Run the first, uh, do a stripping run through the uh, reflux still, and then do a spirit run through the pot still, mm -hmm. and uh, be, and then be giving it the flavour to then be able to drink it. So you're still running your vodka or neutral, as, finishing it as through the pot still even if it's not going through the botanicals yeah. basket? So, well, what we do with, uh, when we run through making our gin is that we essentially run it straight from the, uh, from the boiler mm -hmm. through the gin basket and then it goes straight through to the condenser, condenser yeah. to condense it down. So we don't send it through our columns because yeah. the columns will then strip out the yeah. flavour that we just put in there using the yeah. gin basket to really give it and that final basically product. basically no point. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wasting a lot of its yeah. pickles. When we make our whiskey, so we do a lot yep. of whiskey here as well, and we essentially uh, have a really good quality wash base. Now, with our whiskey build as well, we've jumped back to the mash now, we use mm -hmm. a local brewery yep. uh, to actually make, do a, with a much bigger mash ton than what we can yeah, fit in here. I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys the space here, uh, but. That we've got two 500 litre tanks here and you said but you got 38 30, across the road 38 there. over there but yeah there's no you, a mash tun and brewing systems are a lot bigger yeah. and yeah. your local our local breweries here are some great local brewers yep. and they've got the resources there and this good to really good uh, a grain um, a grain wash and grain mash mm -hmm. so we use them to make our uh, wash base how we came in touch with these guys is that we actually use beer co to supply uh, all of our uh, grain that we use mm -hmm. uh, for all of our whiskey and so we've got uh, down here a grain father down the back yep. and we essentially uh, get, our, get a sample of the different grains from, uh, from you guys and yep. run it through the grain father there to work out a really good wash that we're happy with for our whiskey. And then once we're happy with it, we then order, order from you guys the grain in bulk yep. and send it to our local brewery and they then uh, essentially put it through their mash tun and build that base for us. So when you're doing your little grandfather mash, uh, you, you're making what, a 23 litre batch and um, you'll probably get what, one to two litres of finished whiskey at the end? Yeah. And are you just guessing what sort of um, flavour contribution you're going to get from the barrels once you age or are you sort of simulating that with yeah, some so staves? Yeah, so we're kind or? of simulating it. So we get all of our barrels here which are expert, most of our ones here are ex-bourbon barrels that we use. And, uh, we use them from getting from a cooperage down in Australia, locally in Australia. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we get them, if we order a batch of 20 barrels at a time, we'll get one barrel which is broken down and we'll actually essentially get your wooden stays out of yep. it. And we'll put into into a little, um, well, basically a little bucket where uh, we'll put the stays in there and leave it in there for a month to, to kind of get that flavouring in there. Yep. So we get an idea of what it's going to taste like. Yep. And if we're happy with that, then we'll do it a big scale. And then obviously when you're doing big scale, you've got those sort of markers in the, this is what the wash tasted like in the sample, this is yeah. what it distilled like, this is what it tasted like after this long aging. Yeah. And you can make little corrections as you go with the big batch. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, the new make that we kind of uh, make, it 
kind of gives us a little taste of what it might taste like. Yeah. Uh, and then the main thing is leaving it for, we do our whiskey for at least five years and we let the barrels do its magic. Yeah. Yeah, and just let it, let yeah. it age and mellow and yeah. change. So circling back to your gin products, we've only, I've only got your gin products uh, here, but you do also do liqueurs, is that right? Yeah. And you've got bourbon and uh, you've got uh, whiskey and rum yep. happening as well. So is there an overarching uh, philosophy that Newey Distillery has for all of their products or does it kind of chop and change a little bit depending on what you're aiming for? Or? For us, we are passionate about creating really amazing, good quality spirits. And being able to, we've got a team here, plenty of taste uh, test volunteers here, I tell you what. <laughs> And we love playing around all the time with new flavours. At any one time, we've got about 20 to 30 different new uh, products uh, down the back there, which are, we're just playing around with, really trying to perfect. And once we perfect them, we'll then want to create something that we're happy to release. And for us, at, we're, we're local. Yep. We uh, use basically as much as we can all local ingredients. Uh, we've got a great team here, and for us, this is our passion. We're, we're having fun. We're yeah. having fun with what we're doing. We've got a beautiful location here with a funky cocktail bar at the front. Yeah, it's really and cool. And all the locals love us, come down, have a great time. And for us, the enjoyment and satisfaction we get is out of seeing our customers come back to us saying, oh, we love your products, we love your spirits, we love coming down here and trying your cocktails. And just seeing people happy makes us happy and gives us satisfaction in what we're doing. Yep. And we get to employ some really great local people as well. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so if people are watching this video and they like the sound of what, what we're talking about, what we're drinking, where's the best place for people to find you guys? Uh, come in, do you have a website, have shops and all? Yeah, so if you're not local or if you're stuck in a lockdown area at the moment, mm -hmm. then you can head to newydistillery.com.au N-E-W-Y D-I-S-T-I-L-L-E-R-Y I'll put the link. .com.au <laughs> And if you're local to New South Wales, uh, to Newcastle or can travel here, we're at Edgeworth in New South, uh, New South Wales, which is basically 15 minutes out of Newcastle. Yep. And feel free to come by. We have free taste testings and we're open on a Friday and Saturday night for a cocktail bar with some amazing cocktails made by an amazing mixologist. But we're open here seven days a week for tastings as well. Yeah, you cool. can come in, taste it, buy our products, have a look at, it, at what we do. You can see here our beautiful still. And if you come in on a weekday, you can see this place running in action and our products being made. And if you have any questions or want any advice, feel free to reach out to us as well. We're happy awesome. to help. Feel free to come in, have a chat to our distiller. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's been awesome chatting with you and uh, I'll, I'll take the camera for a bit of a look around um, the rest of the place. But yeah, thank you so much for taking time to uh, have a chat with us about what you do here and a little bit about distilling and try yeah. to get that basic understanding of the, uh, of the process so people can make it at home. Yeah. Uh, Safely. Yeah. Everyone, if you're making home, all I can say is have fun, be safe, know what you're doing, and don't be silly. Don't be silly, yeah. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, we are making a dangerous substance, so yeah. be safe when you're doing it. Know your process and what you're doing, and yeah, just so be safe. Just on that safety, uh, we, we've talked about the, the poison element of the methanol. Obviously, alcohols are poison in high concentrations. Very flammable. And it, that's what I was getting at. And it's very flammable. So if uh, we, if anyone's talking about using gas, we strongly try to steer them away just Absolutely. because it, it nearly removes that issue. Make sure you're um, doing it in open area as well. Yeah. One, your mash smells uh, yeah. uh, when you when it's all fermenting away. So if you're doing it in a very close, tight space, it smells. And if you're doing it in a residential area, you don't want to be gassing out or impacting your neighbours as well. Yeah. But and then when you've got your alcohol, make sure you're storing it safely. Dilute it down. Don't leave big quantities of undiluted alcohol lying around. Yeah. Keep it away from anything flammable. Yep. Because you, you, that high ABV stuff, if it's, if it's a light, you won't even see the flame. Mm. It'll just... It'll you won't just, smell it either. No, it'll just be a little shimmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. No worries. Cool. Thanks very much, Luke. All good. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. I'll make you that.
Yeah. So there you have it guys. Big thanks to Luke and the team at Newey Distillery uh, for letting us have a look around and a chat. You're really great hosts and uh, I learn a lot from you guys uh, and hopefully you guys did as well. Um, before I go, I forgot to mention uh, in the interview, uh, some of their uh, products that they have, they've actually got a shimmering different colored vodkas which they uh, um, use uh, really tiny bits of pearl. Uh, I thought I'd just show you some of the uh, pictures of it. I'll overlay it here. It really does look quite spectacular. And um, yeah, I just thought it was worthy to show it uh, to you guys. Whether you're interested in it or not, that's up to you, but it's cool anyway. So uh, until next time, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing uh, with another video brought to you by Beerco. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.